What's up everybody, Kier Gomes here and welcome back. Well guys, today we are gonna do something a little bit different, a little bit different. Today we are not gonna review a deck of cards. In fact, today I'm gonna do a tutorial on one of my favorite color changes and my specific variation of it. As you can probably tell from the title of this video and from the trailer, today I'm gonna to be teaching you my take on the Bertram change. This is a very knacky type color change. It's a little bit sensitive on angles and we're gonna talk about that today. But if executed properly, it is one of my favorite color changes to do. It's very satisfying as the performer, but as well, it looks great for camera, it looks great live, if you're just doing it for your Instagram, whatever. Before we get started, please do drop a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Without further ado, let's roll that intro and get you guys on your way. All right, so before we learn the change itself, let's go over a little bit of history. If you don't know, uh, the Bertram change was created by Ross Bertram. At least he was the first person to publish the mechanics of the original color change. Ross Bertram was known for uh, sleight of hand, card magic, mostly, most famously at least, in gambling routines. Ross Bertram lived to be, I believe, almost 80 years old. Uh, he died in the very early 90s, and the Bertram change being I think probably the most adopted uh, method or effect that he created uh, that's known by magicians everywhere in the world today. I made a few changes to the mechanics of the Bertram change to make it a little bit easier to execute and kind of suit my style. So let's get into it. All right, so my take on the Bertram change is, in my opinion, a little bit easier and also adds just a little bit of extra, uh, I guess, flair, kind of just the way it's presented. But essentially, I'm gonna go over how to get into the Bertram and then how to execute the change itself and then kind of how to clean up after. And then we're gonna talk about how you can use it in a uh, card trick routine. So uh, for this example, I'm gonna be using the Orbit 4th Edition playing cards. All right, so the first thing, uh, kind of a prerequisite for this change is you definitely need to be comfortable getting a double lift. Now for me, uh, I like to use the strike double and I like to add this little subtlety where I pop it. Uh, if the cards stick together well, that'll work every time. I do it uh, pretty much exclusively just because it looks very, very convincing. So you definitely wanna be comfortable getting a double lift. However you're comfortable, I prefer the strike double because uh, it just makes it easier to get into the trick. All right, so once you get your double lift, you're gonna pick up both cards and make sure that they remain flush the whole time. So you'll notice that what I did here was got my double, drop it on top, kind of squared up with my index, pick it up at the corner, okay? So now it looks fairly convincing, okay? Now to execute the change, this is important. You wanna hold your thumb and index finger kind of pinching the top corner, the top pip where the, the J is. You wanna pinch, okay? Apply a little bit of pressure, not too much, because uh, you don't want to put a crimp in the card, but also uh, not so much that the cards will split. Okay, like that. That's what you don't want. So get your double. It's square. Pinch with the index and thumb, or if you need a little extra support, you can do your thumb and middle finger. It's what I usually do. Now, once you're pinching there, you also want to do the same thing kind of on the opposite pip. So holding it in the corners like this. Imagine there's a line going from here to here and you're gonna hold it on the corners like that, okay? Essentially, you want your thumb to be kind of covering the pips, and you might wanna flash it real quick so that way your spectator can remember what card it was before covering them. So now you're holding it like this, okay? And as a convincer, you kinda of wanna keep it in motion a little bit so that way people don't have time to look at the uh, the sides of the card or that way there's no nobody burning your hands. So let's recap that so far, okay? <clears throat> you get a double, square it up, Pick up the card from the bottom corner with the pip. Place your thumb and index or thumb and middle at the top pip and keep it in motion, okay? This way you can see it is the nine of hearts. Now the next thing you do is very important. You wanna grab your middle finger and place it as close to the middle of the back of the deck as you can so you can essentially start executing the move. So we're here, we wanna grab our middle finger and kind of move it up there. Because what we're gonna do next is swivel the cards in towards our palm. And then we're gonna use the pressure from the middle finger to strip out 
the card that's underneath and put that in Tenkai Palm. I will show you this from an exposed view, uh, like an over the shoulder view, but before I do that, let's recap, okay? So we got our double, we're holding it in the corners of the pips, we're kind of keeping it in motion. We place our middle finger up here, swivel the deck, or the cards, I'm sorry, into the palm of your hand like that, and then use your middle finger to strip out one of those cards into a Tenkai Palm, okay? At speed, it looks very convincing and almost invisible. Uh, let's do an over the shoulder view. So you're gonna pinch on each corner here just like this, and now we wanna get into that swivel motion. So remember, keep it in motion so that way it kinda hides any splits or gaps that you have in your double. Swivel it in this way, so just pull your left hand, if you're right-handed, pull your left hand into your palm like this, so you're kind of pinching it like that, okay? Now from the angle the spectator will be seeing it, it will briefly go out of sight. So that's where you're gonna execute the steal. So you're gonna swivel in, and then now with your middle finger, you're gonna peel off that card into Tenkai Palm, okay? So it should look something like this at speed. It's in motion, swivel it in, peel it, and now you're holding it in Tenkai, but again, for the spectator, they're not gonna see anything, okay? That's when you're gonna point to the card, and then you're gonna bring it in here, pinch, and pull it out, okay? So again, we're moving it, swivel, steal, point, and then this is what you're doing. You're inserting the card, pinching, pulling it out, and it looks like you have changed it, okay? In super slow motion. Now, if you were to do it from the angle that you would normally perform Bertram, which is uh, with the spectator in front of you, Again, that's gonna be basically invisible to them, okay? And if you know your angles, which, by the way, if you're doing this for the camera, you wanna be right directly in front of it, and if you're doing this for a spectator, you wanna make sure that your hand is basically, at any, any vantage point for them, is gonna be covering your thumb if you were to tuck it in, because that's where the Tenkai Palm is gonna flash. So, you wanna do this. Make sure that your spectator can see the front of your hand and that if you were to tuck your thumb in, they wouldn't be able to see it because now you can perfectly hide this Tenkai palm to execute your change. So now that you've got the essentials of getting into and executing the Bertram change, the next thing is we're here, right? So just to recap, we've stripped it out. We're in Tenkai now with this other card. When you hold it, you wanna make sure that you kind of point to the card that you're about to change. It's gonna do two things. It's gonna take attention away from the card that you're palming, but also it's gonna give them one last chance to take a peek at it and puts you in perfect position to make the change, okay? So once you're here, you kinda of wanna to point to the card, right? And you can see from here, you can't see the card. So you wanna point and then just insert the card underneath the card that you're palming, pinch the top and pull them out as one, okay? A little subtlety that I like to do is when I execute the change, put it under and then use your middle and thumb to square up the two cards as one. So that way uh, it kind of leaves no room for doubt that it's just one card. What, what ends up happening if you're not careful is you'll do the change and you'll pull it out and it'll split. So sometimes you wanna pull it out slow and if you're gonna pull it out fast, just make sure that you're holding it with some pressure so that way the cards don't split like that. So now how to get out of the change. So let's go through it at speed one more time. You're gonna get your double, grab it by the indices, swivel, get your card in Tenkai, point or show, reach in, grab it, squaring it out as you pull it out. And now you're in this position. I will just usually hold the card for the spectator. Usually getting out of it is all about misdirection because once you've done that change, the only thing spectators are gonna be looking at is your hands. So, and if you only have the one card in your hand, 
uh, you want to take the heat off it as much as you can. So you execute the change. You're holding the cards. Now you want to take the deck back if, if you have somebody holding it and just plop it on top. Now you're at least in control. You can turn over the double. Again, you can go into an ACR, whatever you want. Uh, or if you're doing this for the camera, it doesn't really matter. You can kind of just execute the change. That's a double backer. And then you can go off camera, whatever works for you. Something that I did in the trailer that you saw was I executed my Bertram. So three of diamonds change it into the 10 of clubs. And then what I did was I squared it up and then I just went into the snap change. That was a horrible snap change, but you get the idea. Now the reason that that works on camera is because the angles are not as uh, severe, right? I'm, I'm standing in front of a camera. I know the angles very well. If you're performing this live, you have to worry about not just the angles, but you also have to worry about the sound of the change because if you if you make that snap change sound one it's going to be almost impossible to clean up uh, without anybody seeing it but also that sound is going to be uh, kind of a giveaway of what you did even if they don't know how you did it they'll know what you did so lastly let's talk about how you can do this in a routine if you're performing live which um, i always recommend to people if you're just getting into magic and you're learning some stuff on YouTube, I think it's great. Um, but I would highly recommend getting out there and performing for some people. Otherwise, you'll never really know if you're getting it. Okay. So uh, since I don't have a spectator here, normally what I would do would be uh, have them cut the cards. Okay. And then I would take the top card, which is the king of spades. Okay. Now, if you'll notice, it's not actually the top card. So I have them cut the deck and I say, okay, let's check out what card you cut to. Got a double and it's the king of spades. Now what I'm gonna do is turn the cards over. Just like a regular ambitious card, I'm gonna drop it into the middle. I can have them push it in, whatever. Next thing I'm gonna do is go, okay, so you can see the card is now not on the bottom and it's not on the top. Since we're doing this ambitious card style and we had that double lift, uh, the spectator's chosen card, which is the king of spades is now on top, so I got another third double. Let's do that again. Put it in the middle, right? It's not on the bottom. Grab another double, and it's not on the top. But, this actually works out. You can always insert some patter about the Joker being a wild card, right? Hand them the deck, you know, sir or ma'am, can you please hold the cards? The thing about Jokers is they were invented to be wild cards for poker. So, if you got a Joker, it was like holding gold because you could change it into anything you want. And sir, can you remind me what your card was? and they'll tell you it's the king of spades, whatever. So now you can execute the Bertram and say, okay, so watch this joker change into your card, the king of spades. Now at this point, you can take the deck back and again, go into a second phase of ambitious card, okay? That's a really good way uh, to use the change itself in a practical routine. The thing is the change is impressive but it's not as impressive uh to a spectator without having the um the sauce on it right having a routine to go around it you don't want to just perform it uh as if that is the trick right you don't want to say okay so i'm going to take this card and change it into this random card for no reason <laughs> you don't want to do that you want to have some pattern you want to have a routine worked out it works really great i think all color changes uh if you're doing it in a live performance um work best in the ambitious card because you can kind of and kind of create your own style with it. Like you can very confident overstate, I can't say enough, this has to be your card. And the spectator can go, oh, no, it's definitely not it. And you go, okay, what was your card again? It wasn't this one? No, it was the nine of hearts. Oh, okay, perfect, there we go. <laughs> it works a lot better as part of a routine, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So there you go, that was a freebie. Um, you can use that as the first phase of your ambitious card. You can use it as the uh, closer of your ambitious card. Well guys, thank you so much for watching my tutorial on the Bertram change. I know that there's other tutorials out there. Mine is a little bit different as you can see and I think it's very well suited for people uh, that want to learn something cool but want to learn it differently or want to learn a more modernized version of the change. It's a very satisfying move for sleight of hand junkies out there but it's also just a really nice effect that looks very clean if you do it properly. My advice is get out there and perform it. Please don't forget to drop a like on this video, guys. It does help me out a lot, and I hope you'll consider subscribing for more awesome content just like this. It's almost time for the orbit launch. By the time you guys are seeing this, I've already made the orbit launch, but for now, 
uh, at the time I'm filming it. It has not happened yet, but it's about to, so I gotta get going. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I know I will. <laughs> and I'll see you guys tomorrow. I got a very special video planned. Peace.